Hello, it's Len. This video focuses on my slightly eccentric, mentally disabled friend, Ray Jackson, who is also known by his alter ego, the Heavy Metal Warrior. I've created a short introduction that will give you a little backstory into who he is and how I met him, just so you have some context when you're watching this video. I'm going to be doing a more documentary style video about him in the future. I'm still collecting materials, photos, videos, etc. to put it together. So in the meantime, I'm going to be putting up some of my shorter videos of some of our adventures together. If you're intrigued by eccentric people like, say, the Tiger King, for example, then you're definitely going to love the Heavy Metal Warrior. Okay, now it's time for you to meet the man, the myth, the legend known as the Heavy Metal Warrior. Ray Jackson is a mentally disabled man originally from Los Angeles, California, who relocated with his parents to Port Townsend, Washington after graduating high school in 1984. I had grown up in the Port Townsend area and I first became aware of him in 1989 when I would see him rollerblading around town while always wearing a Metallica shirt. When I finally met him in the mid-1990s, he introduced himself to me as his alter ego, the Heavy Metal Warrior. Throughout most of the 1990s, I was singing in a band called Circle of Fear, and after running into the Warrior downtown one day, I gave him a flyer and invited him to one of our upcoming shows. After the show, Charlie Burns, who was our guitar player, gave the Warrior my phone number and insisted he call me. The Warrior proceeded to call me and leave messages somewhat obsessively nearly every single day after that. Hi Len, it's me, Ray Jackson, the Heavy Metal Warrior. Hi Len, it's me, Ray. Hi Len, it's me, Ray. Hey Len, it's me, the Heavy Metal Warrior. Hey Len, it's me, the Warrior. Eventually, Charlie and I agreed to go to his house where he told us his ideas for a thrash metal band fronted by him and showed us song lyrics he had written. We were so impressed by his enthusiasm and clever lyrics that we immediately started making music to go with his song ideas. At our next Circle of Fear show, we had the Heavy Metal Warrior open for us and we were his backing band. I played drums, Charlie played guitar, and Charlie's brother Adam played bass. The Warrior named our band SMF, which stood for Sick Motherfuckers, not realizing that this was also the name of the Twisted Sister fan club. Oh well, there was no Google back then. The crowd loved him, and soon after we recorded a full-length album in my bedroom recording studio which he released first on cassette and later on CD. Not long after this, I moved away from Port Townsend and eventually relocated with my then-girlfriend to San Diego, California. During this period, the Warrior tried to keep SMF going with various revolving players, but unfortunately, the initial magic just wasn't there. He was still the Heavy Metal Warrior, though, and he continued to relentlessly promote his past work and his legend continued to grow even without a band. During this time, he discovered that he had attended high school with pioneer internet model Cindy Margolis, and he quickly added this factoid to his resume and his self-promotional talking points, which most people found kind of odd and confusing. So in 2003, armed with a trunk full of SMF CDs and a stack of glossy 8x10 photos of himself, the heavy metal warrior and his longtime girlfriend Alice drove his 1999 Volkswagen Beetle 1,300 miles from Port Townsend to San Diego to visit me. And his car had a fucking spiked steering wheel. How metal is that? His mission was to hang out, meet my friends, revisit his former high school in LA, and of course, make some new Heavy Metal Warrior fans. Oh, and also bowling. I forgot to mention he's an avid bowler and he takes it extremely seriously. This should have you up to speed. And now, some moments I recorded during the Heavy Metal Warriors' first ever visit to San Diego in 2003. The Warrior has arrived. Yeah. The Warrior has arrived! And Alice, too. How's it going? Great. Yeah, it's right. This guy was the maintenance man at our apartment complex. He was working but had to stop just so he could see what was up with this heavy metal warrior guy. Show him your move. Show the people what you got, man. Let's see the move. Check out this move. Step it over here. Step it over, Step it over here so everyone can check it out. So what is that move exactly? Oh, it's a DX suck it move from the WWE. What about, Pete Weber on the PBA tour likes to use it. What about how you come out on stage? Oh yeah. 
You mean well, you you want to see my stage? Or yeah. Could you step back a little further though? Get back over there a little yeah. bit so I can really oh, get it no, in there. There you go. No. There you go. Hell yeah. Uh, we got. Yeah. yeah. This dude's this dude's on stage right here. He's a pro tell him about what you got going. Yeah, you wonder what, what, yeah, I forgot to get the CDs out of the car. Well, you can just tell him about it. Yeah, I'm a lead singer of the hardcore band that he and I formed originally back, I mean, I was watching Circle of Fear in, October, in uh, April of 94 at the fairgrounds. Who's Circle of Fear? Well, one of the premier bands in Port Hadlock history. Eight years, eight years <laughs> after we came out on stage, and that became the, the now world famous or infamous Alive and Sick EP. Eight years afterwards, it's still a classic today, rest in pieces. So far to the extent that Cindy Margolis, my former classmate from 20 years ago, Erickson's Have Southern, you heard of Cindy Margolis? Her favorite song. This guy's heard of Cindy Margolis. Mm -hmm. This dude right here went to school with her. 20 years ago, she had the big brunette hair, was kind of shy, very quiet. I knew she was extremely intelligent, very bright. We went to the Eric and Joan Erickson Center for Adolescent Advancement together, 83 and 84. She went there for one year, I went there for a year and a half. I was there when she came in, I was there when she graduated. Hey, ish. All right, people, let me just break it down for you to try and get an idea where we're at here. I know it's hard to see and everything, but here's the story. A friend of mine who was in a band was playing at a local club, and he asked if we wanted to come sit in with them and play one of the Heavy Metal Warrior songs. The Warrior was super pumped about this. We're over at my house. We're hanging out with the Heavy Metal Warrior, Big HM Dub, right here, of course. We're over there hanging out. All of a sudden, we get a phone call. Fuck, man, this band's taking the stage. The they hear the Heavy Metal, Metal Warriors in town. In San Diego. I mean, right about now, the heavy metal warriors live in the rock and roll lifestyle. I mean, he didn't yeah. have time to rehearse. He didn't have time to get ready. He grabbed his fucking gear, as you can see, if you can see. He's got his fucking gear on. I mean, it's nighttime, yes, but he's got, <clears throat> but he's got his shades on. I mean, it's basically like Batman in the fucking Batmobile. I'm Robin. Warrior in the war horse. Pal. I'm Robin, and Alice back there. It's Batgirl. It's Batgirl. Yeah. And now here we are on our way to Dream Street in Ocean Beach to debut. Peace out! What's on your mind, dude? What's happening? Just got a call an hour ago. They want the warrior to play a sadly fucking echo. The warrior they want? Warrior, they shall get. There you go. It's impromptu, it's spontaneous, it's in your face. And if the mainstream bubble comers out there don't understand our lifestyle, they just fuck. Here we are, Dream Street, Ocean Beach, California. The heavy metal warrior. He's meeting up with the fans. Fuck yeah. Fans are arriving, ready to rock this motherfucker. The warrior is gonna kick ass hard on the stage tonight. Oh, well, kind of more what I was getting at is because he's a psycho. <laughs> tonight, we show all San Diego what the big HM dub can do. The 11th wonder of the world. The HM dub here. The dubster, the legacy. In case you're wondering who the fuck I am, I'm Ray Jackson, the Heavy Metal Warrior, and I feel fortunate for a couple of reasons. I feel fortunate to be right here in Sandy fucking Echo!
people. Quick update. Here we are in the War Horse. We got Alice and we got the Warrior. We're in Van Nuys, California, and the Heavy Metal Warrior is very close to returning to the Eric and Joan Erickson Center after 20 long years. What do you say to that, Warrior? Damn yeah, straight, dude. <clears throat> Please excuse me, because I just performed last night and my voice is tired and shit. I can barely fucking speak as far as, yo, what, from last night's show, and that's the only reason why. You're right. I mean, fuck. Yep, what? Sydney Margolis went to this school, book, mm -hmm. folks. So we do breed legends in this, in this school. Legends. How about that, Alice? How does that make you feel, Alice? Man, these roads are crazy, huh? Yep. 6305. Unfortunately, when we got to the Warriors High School, we were not allowed to film, so we didn't get any footage. I was able to get a picture of him in front of the school's sign, though, and another with one of the staff members who remembered him from back in the day. Okay, well, here we upstairs. are, it's July 11th, 2003, motherfuckers. Just hanging out here with Sam Watson of the Apex Theory. Hey, what's up? My friend Sam played drums in a band called the Apex Theory, and the Warrior was a huge fan. So we stopped by his house to get his CDs signed while we were in the area. All right. Yeah, the big H jumped up. The 11th wonder of the world has arrived. What did we do this afternoon? Well, we just went to Subway and... Uh, had some sandwiches down the subway. It was pretty damn good. And what did we do before that? And before that, we were just hanging out at Erickson Center. Um, which you know, is? My old staff member, George Vega, which is my high school that I went to 20 years ago. Ironically oh. enough, the same high school Cindy Margolis went to 20 years ago. That's very ironic. Yeah. We breed stars at Erickson Center. That's right. They just don't want to admit it. <laughs> and you got Sam autographed all your shit, right? Yeah. Sure I mean, did. here we are at his place, dude. Yeah, take a look at this, dude. Let's Top see. seat turvy. Random heavy. bursts. Very heavy. And the self-titled first EP. Extreme. Oh yeah. Alice is loving this shit. Gave him my gave him my CDs. Damn, dude. Watching. Are you going to be ready to take on Jeff? I bet your ass I'll be ready. Good. Gotta get what a, what, what kind of problems are you having? Coming across like this, i got to get it up straight through. I see. Okay, i got to dump my clean every side. Or 
us up in big fucking trouble. Is there pressure because all these fuckers are here to see you? Nah, I don't consider pressure. I always like to put on a show. Right on. You like to put on a good fucking show. Usually it takes me a good game and a half to get loose, but when I'm loose, I'll be ready. You'll be ready. Yeah. Hell yeah. Come on, slaughterhouse! <laughs> Oh man, I screwed it up, dude. You see that? Here's the warrior making some new fans. Hell yeah. Ever-growing legend. Rock and roll. All right. I'm smart. Hell yeah, dude. The legend grows so fiercely, huh? Yeah. I'm also gonna get my game bro. That's right, man. You might sell a couple CDs too, huh? Yeah. These dudes are loving the shit. They're tripping balls. How do you feel? Bye! Right on.